lesson, we'll be using five of the seven elements of art. The seven elements of art are form, line, shape, color, texture, value, and space. For this lesson, we'll be focusing on just form, line, shape, color, and texture. The elements of art are very important because all artwork that has ever been created or ever will be created uses at least one of these elements. I'll be going over how we use these elements of art as we create during this video. Let's talk about the first element of art I mentioned, form. Form simply means something that is 3D, or in other words, three-dimensional. Three-dimensional, as you know, means something that sticks out and isn't flat. The mug we'll be creating is three-dimensional. We'll be using a piece of 9 by 12 heavyweight tag board to create our background. Hold the paper so it's vertical. That means up and down, not horizontal, which means across. The next thing you're going to do is draw a horizontal line to separate the table from the wall behind the mug. On your paper, locate the middle, and just a little bit lower than the middle, you want to draw a line, a horizontal line. This step is optional, meaning you don't have to, but can if you want to. We're going to draw the saucer, or plate, that's under the mug. To draw the saucer, we're going to draw an oval right about here. We're going to draw an oval because of the perspective we want to create for our picture. Perspective in art means how you see things in real life, depending on where you're standing or sitting. Perspective makes artwork look more realistic. If I were to stand right over the mug looking down on it, the saucer would appear round which it is. But if I were looking at the mug on the saucer almost directly across from me, say if I was sitting down, the saucer appears to look like an oval shape because of the way I'm viewing it. That's perspective. The next step is you're going to create a pattern on the wall as well as the table, two different patterns. As you know, patterns are any lines, shapes, or colors that repeat. So I'm going to start creating a pattern for my wall first, and I'm going to create some snowflakes. You could draw hearts, stars, diamonds, zigzag lines, spirals, stripes, candy bars, whatever patterns you want. Just make sure you create two different patterns, one for the wall and one for the table. Remember, when drawing, always draw lightly in case you want to erase. Now that I'm done with the wall, I'm going to create a pattern on my table. I think I'm going to use a ruler to create some diagonal lines. The next step is to outline all your lines in your patterns with oil pastels. If you drew shapes for your patterns, you can either just outline your shapes or color them in completely. If you choose to just outline them, you will paint them in later. But before we use the oil pastels, you might need to wipe them with a paper towel to clean off any other colors. Whether you're storing colors separately or a whole bunch of colors together in a plastic bin like I do, most oil pastel sticks will eventually get other colors on it just from using them. Like on this yellow one here. It had some blue on it. So simply just take a paper towel and put your oil pastel and twist it a few times around until it comes off. We're going to create an oil pastel resist later on with watercolor paint, so make sure you press hard not only to show a vibrant color, but also to resist the watercolors, 
which I'll talk more about when we get to it. So I'm going to start outlining my snowflakes with blue. You might notice as you use the oil pastels that it might leave a little chunk here and there. Don't wipe it away, it's gonna smear it. What you wanna do is either tap the back of it or shake it away from the table, and that will get rid of it. Next, I'm going to outline the line that separates the wall from the table. Then go over the pattern in your table. Remember to continue pressing hard as you trace over your patterns. You can either color the plate in entirely, if you drew one, or outline with oil pastels and paint in later. I'm going to fill mine in. I'm also going to add a black outline to make the plate stand out more. Next, we're going to create an oil pastel resist using watercolor paints. I'm going to start painting my wall first, then the table. The key here is to make sure your brush has a lot of water on it to help the paint resist the oil pastel. The oil pastels resist the paint because oil pastels have oil in them, and oil and water don't mix. The paint just rolls off of it and only sticks to the paper. You can create a painted pattern of color if you choose to do so, like I did here on my table or wherever. I chose to do primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. Or you could choose any colors you want. For instance, maybe you might wanna choose just warm colors. Warm colors, remember, are reds, oranges, yellows, and pinks, although I don't have pink in this tray. Or perhaps you want to use just cool colors. Cool colors are greens, blues, and purples. Or you might want to use complementary colors, as I did here with blue and orange. Blue and orange are complementary colors. Complementary colors are opposite each other on the color wheel, and they consist of one primary color and one secondary color. They really make an image pop and stand out when used next to one another in artwork. Other complementary colors are red and green, or purple and yellow. Black and brown are called neutral colors. You can decide if you want to use those, but I like bright, bold colors for this project. You can paint with any colors though. These are all just some ideas. You don't have to copy me at all. Be creative and think about what colors you want to use in your artwork. Make sure you clean your brush really, really good in the water and then dry it off in a paper towel before switching to a different color. I'm going to paint my table next and I'm going to use purple, green, and orange. Do you remember what colors those are in the color wheel? If you guess secondary colors, you're right. Stick with one color in your brush as you paint if you're using multiple colors for your pattern. I decided since I'm using purple, orange, and green, I'm just gonna stick with purple on my brush and only apply purple where I need it and then clean my brush later on when I need to switch to a different color. It just makes things a lot easier.
Next, on a small strip of paper, we're going to create the mug. And this piece of paper is four and a half by nine inches. It's a piece of heavyweight tag board as well. We're going to create a pattern on the mug as well. The first thing you want to do is draw a line near the top. I'm going to use a ruler to create a straight line. You can either decide to create a pattern only on the bottom part or do the top part as well like I did in this one. But that's up to you. You can leave the top part plain, just painted, and just the bottom part with a pattern. Once you're finished creating your pattern, then outline all lines with an oil pastel. You can use any colors you want to outline your pattern. You could stick with just one color like I am right here, or use multiple colors to outline your pattern. The next step is to paint the mug. Use any colors you'd like. Think about if you want to use a pattern of colors, what kind of colors I mentioned earlier, whether it's warm, cool, complementary, neutral, primary, or any colors you want. Just have fun with it. For the bottom part of my mug, I'm going to use complementary colors, purple and yellow. You can use any colors you want though. For the next step, I'm going to paint a small piece of heavyweight tag board. It's three by four and a half inches, and this is going to be for the handle. Once all your papers are dry, then you can assemble the mug. Flip over the paper, and then what you need to do is fold back about an inch or so on both sides. Make a nice crease and do it on the other side. Glue both flaps really, really good with a lot of glue using a glue stick. Position the paper where you want it while curving it to create the mug form. Before gluing down, think about where you want it to go and then press the flaps down really, really good for at least five seconds on each side using both hands. Since we created three different patterns in our artwork between the wall and the table and the mug, we created a lot of variety. Variety is one of the principles of art. Variety just means using lots of different shapes, lines, or colors in your artwork. We're gonna add the steam for the mug using some polyester batting. Batting is a kind of fiber and is used a lot in stuffed animals, pillows, and quilts to make them soft. This is going to add some texture to our art. Texture is the way something feels or looks like it feels. This batting has a soft, fluffy texture. Once you've taken a piece of batting, pull it apart a little bit between your fingers and stretch it out a tiny bit. Shape it with your hands so it kind of resembles steam coming out of a hot mug. But be sure it's not too long. You want it to make sure that it comes out of the mug but doesn't come off the paper. Once you're satisfied with how the steam looks, pull it out of the mug 
and then glue the paper where you want the steam to go really, really heavily with a lot of glue using a glue stick. Once you've done that, then place the steam back on and press for at least five seconds, making sure that the batting is stuck on the paper really good. Now we're gonna create the handle for the mug using our painted paper. Flip over your painted paper and we're gonna create the letter C for our mug handle. Start at the edge and draw really, really big, almost filling up the whole piece of paper, making a big C shape for the handle. Once you've done that, then cut it out and simply glue into place. If you notice that your mug's handle is a little too large, just trim the ends a little bit with some scissors. Before gluing the handle down, Make sure you put it right up against the edge of the mug so it looks like it's attached. Then press for five. And there you have it. Thanks for watching.